we are developing students for the industry, career type of education, so that they become our replacements. These young people have chosen this opportunity to get a jump start on their career. They'll have a better idea uh, about what they want to do and what they're good at by the time they leave high school. There's some great opportunities for these students that are coming out of the career and technical programs from Henrico County. Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Henrico CTE. Now I am Rashawn Garnett, and with me I have Mike Roberts. And uh, today, Mike, we are on a remote location, sort of remote. Remote, location. remote, remote. It reminds me of the Old West. And also, guys, an update here. I actually beat Mike to a location first this time. Like, usually Mike's here, like. That was only because Mike minutes. didn't read his email properly. <laughs> hey, I read it, but didn't hey, dude, read it. Dude, that I is, thought I was going to pair him. That is not on me. <laughs> that is not on me. But uh, we got some guests here for you guys. But first, I want to remind you to check us out on our social media Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all at the handle Henrico CTE. Mike, tell them where they can find the podcast. You can find the podcast on all of your major and minor podcast venues, such as Spotify, uh, Apple, Google. On and on and on. Yep. So uh, however you want to listen, wherever you want to listen, we got you covered. Just search Henrico CTE in the search bar and you should find us. And, and there's a lot of people us. apparently listening. The numbers are going up. Ooh, still going up. That's good. We that's crossed good. the 4,000 listens line and climbing from there. All right. Got I think we're 41. 41. 41 and change. Oh, good. 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 People are Just listening. since a week. And you're doing a great job, by the way, Mike. People are listening. <laughs> Uh, for you, I don't know why they would listen for me or you've got like the that. you've got the oh, radio whatever. voice. Not, not a radio voice. All right, all right. Enough <laughs> babbling between me and you. Let's actually get to our guests here because they got places uh, to be. All right. Today we are talking to Michael Wooten, VP of Arcadis US Inc. Did I say that right? Arcadis, 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 Arcadis. Arcadis yeah. All right, got it. Uh, Ed Overman, Capital Projects Manager, Henrico County. Tim Moore, and you're going to have to help me with the company name. How do you pronounce it? Schnabel. Schnabel. Okay. Schnabel Engineering. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on Henrico CTE now. But first, I want uh, to give you guys an opportunity to talk a little bit about yourselves. Can you guys give us a brief introduction, uh, talk about what you guys do on the day-to-day, -day, you know, and we'll start with Ed over here. All right, thank you very much. Um, basically, uh, I started with the project uh, with Henrico County in, in 1991 in operations. And as time went on uh, with various projects, this particular project came to uh, focus and I applied for it and got the position uh, in 2011 and basically we started uh, in the part of the design uh, uh, team with Arcadis and Snobble. The main contract started in uh, 2017. Um, uh, basically uh, an average day for us up here is 7 o'clock to 5.30. We have a one hour commute to the project. We have uh, one to three meetings every day, uh, lots of computer time, uh, reviewing submittals and concrete tests, uh, responding to emails. Uh, minimum twice a month, I fly a drone here for construction updates and any special needs, uh, which includes time for editing and producing uh, drone footage. All right. So, well, just real quick, uh -huh. what's the project? It's Cobbs Creek Reservoir. There you go. Right, we'll Cobbs Creek Reservoir. Henrico right. County's new reservoir in Cumberland County. Cumberland County. All right, all right. And uh, you, you can be honest with us, Ed. Your favorite part is fly flying a drone, isn't it? <laughs> That's one of the perks, <laughs> yes. It would be my favorite part. And I, I have to blame that on Arcadis. They, <laughs> they provide us with the first drone. I am a licensed pilot. All right. Speaking of Arcadis, let's, let's, let's get a little introduction for you, Mr. Wooden. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I've been in the environmental consulting business for over 20 years now and been involved in this project since 2011. Um, and it was weird. When I got involved, I sort of sat down and knew that I, I knew what I'd be doing for the next 10 years. Um, that's right around the corner on us now. So, you know, day in, day out, I work with a great team of folks that, uh, that you know, solve problems, um, help support the county and Ed and Tim and the team that's out here, um, and have just really enjoyed watching this project be built, come up out of the ground, literally. Um, you know, it's always fun as an engineer to see something that you put on paper come to fruition. So that's, uh, that's been a great uh, experience for me personally. And that's something we hear commonly when we talk to en engineers, right, Mike? They like being able to see their actual projects come to life and then you'll you'll be able to say hey i had a hand in this well really in the careers well being there day to day versus just <laughs> yeah you know yeah I, I helped put it together but then somebody else took it <laughs> right yeah being there day to day all right mr moore yeah i've been with schnabel engineering for 33 years um i've done pretty well much all aspects of what schnabel does um 
As far as this project, I am the RPR, which is the project resident project representative. And my day-to-day -day activities consist of a lot. Um, reviewing paperwork, doing the site report, which usually is about 15 to 17 pages long with photos. I document everything that happens on the job. And then I've got uh, three people out in the field doing uh, testing. And then I also have one in the lab doing lab testing. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, a lot. I would imagine it'd be a lot because you guys probably have a lot of work to do on a lot of land out there. Why, why don't we get, who wants to tackle doing three quick main descriptions of this project? You know, like its size and oh, what yeah, it's going to yeah. be doing okay. and everything. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Who can, who can describe the project? Who wants project to jump on that one? I like a good. I'll uh, give it a shot. All right, here. give it a shot. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, at its core, this is a, uh, it's, it's a pumped storage reservoir that we're constructing, and it's being done to augment flows in the James River in order to increase the Henrico County's water supply uh, for future needs. Um, so it's, it, there's a couple of main components. We've got a, a set of intake screens in the James. Um, we've got a 150 million gallon per day pump station that's going to be used to, to pull water out of the river and, and put it in this reservoir. The reservoir itself is going to have a capacity of almost 15 billion gallons with a B, um, surface area of about 1,700 acres, um, and uh, is going to be used to store water um, and, and be used to release back to the river during periods of low flow, again, so that the county downstream off Gaskins Road can uh, can pull water out and use it for, for potable water supply. So That sounds like a huge, huge project. So what, what is the time frame for something like that, guys? Well, I mentioned 2011, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Yeah, um, 2011, right? That, and, and it, you know, the, the the origins of the project go back into the early 2000s, and that really came to be after a, a fairly significant period of drought when the county started to ask itself questions about its future, you know, its ability to supply water into the future. Um, and, you know, initially a lot of work was done to identify sites, and that's how we ended up where we're sitting here today. Um, when I got involved, we, we, were, we began the engineering phase, which was looking at the ways that we needed to move the water around, the ways that we needed to construct a dam, and Tim can certainly talk more about that. Um, to you know to provide all the functional needs for the project so you know we've we went through that design phase we we broke ground on construction i believe in 2015 ed yes. um you know in a couple of different project was broken up into a couple of different phases um we've been at the current phase since about 2017 and we're looking at you know probably more than a year now until we're going to be done so it's it's quite a project um it you know it takes a while for everything to come together um and particularly when you're working in a in a greenfield site like this with where nothing previously had been um but uh you know when it's done it's going to be pretty satisfying i think the cool part about it is is when he talks about how large the the the, the reservoir is is that i did a quick look this morning to do a comparison it's with with uh, swift creek reservoir which more people may be familiar with over in chesterfield it's only 5.2 billion gallons and this one's f almost yeah, 50, this, or at 15 this will be the largest municipal water supply reservoir in the state when it's when it's done and it's ours. <laughs> it's right That's what, what, yeah. what, kind of, what kind of impact, guys? I mean, anybody can take this one. What kind of impact uh, do you guys hope this has on the county in, in the long run? We'll go, go ahead. What kind of impact do you hope this has on the community? Well, the uh, reservoir will offer a lot of recreation. We're going to have, we've entered into an agreement with Gaming and Fishery, and they're going to actually stock the uh, reservoir for us. And we should have uh, an area for swimming and uh, kayaking and things like that. So we will have uh, this dawn to dusk, uh, have a, a, a double-sided uh, dock. Uh, we have uh, like 38 spaces for trucks and cars uh, with trailers. Um, again, dawn to dusk and um, a... Um, Good fishing. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I think one of the, the cool aspects aspects of it is that during times of drought, they can actually augment the water flow in the James um, when it's low. It's, you oh, know, yeah, during times of drought. Right. So I think that'd be that's a really cool aspect of it. So Jim, talk a little bit about that. How were you guys able, or how would you be able to uh, attenuate water flow to different areas? Well, when the reservoir fills, it's going to initially fill by Cobb's Creek and its uh, feeder streams. But once that happens, then it's going to spill into the low-level inlet. And then it, while it's under being construction, the actual conduit through the dam will keep the stream alive. 
All right, all right. And we are speaking with Michael Wooten, VP of Arcadis, Ed Overman, Capital Projects Manager with Henrico County, and Tim Moore of Schnabel Engineering. And uh, we understand that it takes a whole lot of technology to get something like this done. Just talk about it. Uh, Michael mentioned that it started, uh, that he got on the project in 2011. It's 2020 now. So what are some of the technological changes that you guys have seen throughout this project's evolution? I think early on, you know, I mentioned the, the process of screening, identifying and screening sites to actually construct something like this. And, and uh, you know, we, we were, even at that time in the early 2000s, we were making use of technologies like GIS, um, which were, um, you know, effective at, at looking at wide swaths of, of land uh, across multiple counties. I mean, we, we looked at more than 50 locations, I believe, um, before we, we settled on this one. So, you know, I think we've we've been able to you know starting there and and coming forward in terms of the way the technology's evolved you mentioned earlier you know the drones that the, the drone that ed uses has been a huge benefit to us in terms of understanding what's going on on this site um you know it's a it's a huge site and to be able to keep track of what's going on on a day-to-day basis for you know environmental benefits for construction progress um and even for knowing you know what things looked like six months a year 18 months ago um having that um capability has been great um and i think that there's been other evolutions in technology just you know with the things we hold in our hands that we have in our pockets right our cell phones you know we, we've seen them evolve in in so many ways in our personal lives you know we're using them for construction management at this point in time we're able to to have virtual site visits with with um, technical staff who might be sitting across the country showing them what we're seeing in the field um allowing them to provide feedback directly on uh, on site um and and to be able to you know answer questions questions that come up because you know you can you can do your best to put something on paper and, and have it look the way you want um, but when somebody grabs that plan and has to go build it they're they're likely to come up with questions um, about how the nuts and bolts come together so I think those are just a couple examples I know Tim you you guys have taken uh, um, you know seen the the, the the dam construction industry come a long way over time maybe talk about some of the things that you guys do yeah well one of the things is that like Mike was talking about with iPhones FaceTime you can go to FaceTime. You can show in real time what you want to see. Um, not so much just a picture. Um, he can see it real time and, and be able to make a decision on what needs to be done in that particular time. And one of the big things on this particular project, and we probably will get into this a little bit later, was the, uh, the capability of putting a fiber optic cable in through the bottom, the base of the dam and the chimney drain. And that will allow us to be able to see real time where we may have some potential problem areas in the dam to where water may be coming through it'll come out as blue or if there's heat you know it'll come out as red and this will be the first dam in the united states that'll have that capability and eventually wow. it'll they're talking about that this fiber can also maybe measure the strain which would be the stress in that in the embankment yeah and i'm sure something like that will definitely help make your jobs a little bit easier right yes and i mean that's the whole key is you know being able to see something real time and be able to make some decisions if something happens to go wrong right. yeah as the owner we would certainly appreciate that because uh we can take the temperature of the, of the dams to see what they see if it's healthy or not right yeah <laughs> and, and, and ed you mentioned you'd been in uh in, in this business for quite some time what are some of the technological changes that you have seen uh, during your time in, in this industry, not just, you know, talking about this project in individually, but overall, what are some of the technological changes that you have seen from when you started to 2020? Yeah, um, well, um, back in my surveying days, we had Olivetti computer and it would take days and days to even close on a piece of uh, farmland or property. And, and today's uh, uh, technology, you can probably do it in a day or so or less. Um, the uh, computers have changed. Uh, we used to use the old key punch, old punch cards, which I'm sure some people remember that. Um, as far as field work, uh, our inspectors years ago, we used to do a lot of sketches in their field books, and they still do, but uh, that technology has changed with the new cameras and uh, all the technology to actually uh, imprint uh, a location or time or date on a photo taken in the field, which has been very valuable in this project. 
Yeah, I mean, Rishon, if I could add, you know, one more thing, I think that might be of interest to, to the CTE folks as well, too, is, you know, think about the, you know, we've gone from, a, from you know, from doing everything on paper to having computers allow us to help put drawings together to really now having, you know, this concept of building information modeling, you know, this three, four, five D type models that we can build that not only help us to visualize what we're designing, you know, what, what's going to be built as we're designing, but also capture information associated with that. So when you think about when, when we're done with this project, we'll be uh, preparing and turning over a fully electronic operations and maintenance manual to the county as opposed to a bunch of three ring binders on a shelf somewhere, right? So that's another example of how, you know, the industry's changed and the way that we, we, we interact with what we do has changed. And that will help out as far as reviewing because I know we have a lot of as-built drawings and manuals in our files back at Woodman Road. and. To go through those is pretty um, painful. <laughs> so it's even lifting them up out of the, the cartons. <laughs> but anyway, the, the uh, electronic files is going to be a very good plus for this project in future. I think it's, I think a cool part about it is that from the engineering standpoint of where the person who is putting you know who's built it in the computer and his design goes right out to the guy who's on the dozer pushing dirt mm -hmm. you know and he knows where he's supposed to go and how, how he's supposed to be pushing it where he's supposed to be pushing it the angle that that's supposed to be laying I mean it's all right you know from office to field is just mm -hmm. a, that connection is amazing innovation is the word and uh, on a project of this size guys you're going to need a lot of help you're going to need a lot of a, a lot of uh, cooperation so just you know talk about uh, you know some of the deals that had to go into this some of the cooperation some of the ways the community helped you guys uh, along the way as you or, or even as you are progressing on this deal well, I mean, I think, you know, a couple of things come to mind. Certainly it's a, you know, you mentioned early on we're, uh, you know, we're sitting here in Cumberland County um, on a project that's going to be built and owned by Henrico County. So I think there was some some great interjurisdictional collaboration and coordination that, that happened um, to get folks to the table. And, and, you know, think about it from a from a higher level, um, you know, this is a regional solution. This is a, a water supply that's going to be there for, you know, help the county meet its needs for at least the next 50 years. Um, but it also supplements and helps the region so i think that's that was a, a great example of collaboration i think you know when you when you look at a project of this size you know from like arcadis even as as um, large and diverse as we are um you know we we chose to to approach this in, in tandem with companies like schnabel and 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 some others that were part of our team um, because we wanted to have the right expertise to bring to the table to to serve the county um, you know, and I think once you bring a, uh, you've seen all the folks out there operating the equipment, you bring a contractor on board and that's really a, it's a joint venture of multiple firms as well because of the, really the diverse type of construction that this is between, there's a lot of earthwork, obviously there's a lot of vertical construction, um, you know, in, in some of the facilities and line work and things like that. So it's taken multiple entities to come together and collaborate to, to get us to where we are now. And, you know, it will take that, we'll continue that collaboration will have to continue to get us over the finish line. All right. Has it, has it been difficult at all? Maybe getting the work done or maybe finding people to fill those spots that are needed? Well, that's the other aspect. I mean, there's uh you know a lot of people are being hired locally that are operators truck drivers laborers um there's also been a a local uh restaurant that's being used you know every day <laughs> breakfast morning lunch you know and dinner and then uh, at one point they had actually a, a trailer set up here that oh nice supplied mm -hmm. oh nice lunch and uh and breakfast okay. so so I think it's helped the local economy as well. Well, that that's absolutely wonderful. What are some of the challenges that you guys have faced in, in during the process of this whole entire project? Well, in the last three years, a lot of it's weather. Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to bring that up. Yeah. The weather is the biggest challenge. Yeah, we were riding around with Ed, and he was talking about that uh, prior to this <laughs> podcast. He gave us a nice uh, little tour seems, of the area. It seems like the past couple of years, it's just been one delay after the other because of the weather. <laughs> yeah, but, but weather. Let's talk about how weather affects a project like this. Well, I think currently, don't they have close to 300 days yes. of weather days mm -hmm. already over the course of the three years? Weather mm. days? What does that mean? Like, this to find weather days Stop work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't work. It's so, raining. So what, how, how are you guys able to, to adjust? And, I mean, I'm sure you guys have some sort of timeline, some sort of deadline where you guys have to uh, have certain things done. So how are you guys able to adjust, uh, you know, with those weather days in mind currently the contractor is getting pretty innovative because um, we're getting into the winter time and they are having some wet materials out there that they have to deal with and 
they are now experiencing using a jet dryer typically what you would see on race car tracks nascar tracks um, they've currently got one jet dryer mounted in the back of a haul truck and uh so they're fine-tuning that one and then uh is that that's drying off the road access roads in, around the, the project it's actually drying the material sure, that we're yeah. putting in the embankment oh yeah. okay. Uh, okay wow yeah so the he's got another idea that he's going to go ahead and try and mount a jet dryer on a disc to where it's funneling it down into the disc, disc blades to assist in drying the material back. So, wow, that sounds like something he could patent. <laughs> <right there>. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to email that to himself yeah. or something. Yeah, uh, so the main thing is core, which okay. is our center section, the, the water stopper of the dam, is where they're having the biggest issues. All right, and uh, in talking to Mac, our director, Mac Baton, uh, he described filling the reservoir. Can someone walk us through that? How does that, how does filling and draining the reservoir, how does that work? Well, it's going to be filled in several stages. Uh, the initial stage will be about roughly the bottom of the, the creek down there is 205, and it will be filled to 222 by the creek. Depending on the water flow that we anticipate, that could be you know a duration of 12 days. Then the next level in stage one is going from 222 to 272, which that will be filling from the pump station or from the river which um, is a pretty good uh, max pump rate is 150 million gallons per day. So that's just stage one. Yeah, and I, then I just saw some eyebrows raised up <laughs> when they said it would only take a few days, but considering that's a very minute area of the reservoir to get it up. Yeah. Right, because so. it's going to be smallest at the, at the it, lowest exactly. parts versus exactly. and then it just right. spreads that's out from there. That's why Cobbs Creek can yeah. accommodate that. Okay. It will need a little help after that. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go into imagine. a hold stage at that elevation of 272, and that's just kind of to allow the embankment to saturate a little bit. And then uh, we go to the next stage, which is going to go from 272 to 312, and we're anticipating 30 days. To, to do that um, there we have a, a max fill rate of 1.33 feet per day but again you know over the course of 1800 acres that's yeah quite a bit of water which um, at that point the uh, at the end of that stage there should be 5.82 billion gallons in the reservoir at stage two then again we'll have we'll hold that stage uh, for 14 days and then we go into the final stage three, which will go from 312 to 345. And we're anticipating 59 days for that. And then uh, a max fill rate of one foot per day. And uh, again, 150 million gallons per day to bring it into 14 billion, 14.86 billion gallons that sounds like a lot of math would have to go into figuring all that out right mike, yeah. mike I'm just oh, yeah. I, I think my head's hurting right now <laughs> <laughs> well we'll try and scrap we'll transcribe all that for you guys out there listening to the audience no, I'm, just kidding. I'm kidding i'm really not not gonna transcribe that entire thing so um, um you know it's always about it's about the students for us uh here in Henrico cte and just going out there uh mr overman gave us a nice little tour prior to this podcast of the land and everything and just seeing the, the different folks working out there and all I could think about was there is a whole bunch of different jobs and different opportunities out here on a project like this and probably on projects like this uh, in the future so uh, for students what are the learning opportunities do you guys think exist on a project like this maybe now or maybe even in the future and well, I know for me, you know, that I, I never learn more as an engineer than when I'm getting screamed at by a contractor for uh, for, for showing, trying to design something to be built a certain way, right? So you learn a lot when you see your projects be built um, because you, you realize some of the practical limits there are on, on how things can be done. I think that's always a great learning opportunity. I, anytime we have young engineers in our firm, we try to get them out on site somewhere. Um, you know, even if they weren't involved in the design, they can see, um, you know, what kind of challenges are faced when you're actually working with materials in the field and doing that. So I think that's certainly a, a, a big opportunity. Um, you know, I think there's just the variety of trades that you see out here, both professional, blue collar, you know, the, the things that are happening, um, whether it's, you know, electricians or instrumentation control techs or, um, you know, mechanics and, and things of that nature. Or, um, you know, I talked about the design phase and some of the things we do with the computer modeling and, 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 and stuff like that. So 
you know, I think there there's a, a whole range of opportunities for, for folks to contribute on a project like this. And the more that you can see something like this happen, um, I think the more you, you take that, you follow it away, and you, you can apply it to the next opportunity, the next challenge that comes along for you. All right. How do you, how do you think we can better prepare students to be uh – I guess more of an asset to you guys when they leave high school or maybe even during high school on, on, on a project like this. What are some of the things that we can do as CTE to help prepare our students to be able to work on something like this? Well, you know, Mac is gonna gonna think I planted this, but you, you know, you guys talk about being life ready all the time, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and he probably and, is, though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but but I think that's true. And I mean, you know, we talk about there there's there's hard skills and soft skills, right? And I think having folks understand when they come out that there's there's more than just what they'll learn from the book or, or the teacher. There's there's how they carry themselves. There's there's how they they take on responsibility, right? There's there's how they interact with uh, how they interact with with their colleagues, their peers, everyone else involved. Um, you know, I think that's as important as anything you learn, anything you can apply is just that understanding that we all have a job, we all have responsibilities, um, and, and we need to count on each other, right? And I think that, I think for the most part, County, uh, you know, Henrico Public Schools does a great job with that. I've been very impressed with the, the kids that I've met, um, you know, through my interactions with CT especially. Um, but that's the kind of thing I think that it, that that doesn't always get talked about and thought about. Um and uh, but I but I think is really important for for preparation. Yeah. You're certainly going to need those soft skills. Again, we mentioned uh, how many different people are working on this project. Uh, you got to talk to different people. Got to be able to work with different people. Got to be able to collaborate, understand, and be able to uh, you know cross a lot of bridges at the same time. Not burning bridges. You know what I mean. So <laughs> <laughs> you got to work. You know you got to be able to work together. How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Uh, yeah, I would imagine you have to on a project like this. Yeah, with um with what's but. <laughs> what Henrico and the world's been dealing with for the past few months. I think the, the whole soft skills thing that you were talking about, um, I kind of turned it up on it and flipped it a little bit. I, I like calling them essential skills now because it's, we're always talking about essential workers. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any aspect of this project that doesn't connect back to Henrico CTE and what we're teaching our kids, whether it's the essential skills or the actual practical experience of the skills, whether it's from, with our trades or the our engineering program, um, you know, whether it's our comprehensive programs or, or it's the A-Center programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything leads back into these types of career, you know, there leads into the careers that could end up where somebody's working on one of these projects at so many different levels. Because it's like with, it's like when, you know, Rajon and I, when we were working with, um, um, Dominion Power yep. and yeah, Dominion the, the, the new, the new, the new career, career cluster. cluster. Yep. And we were, f and there were things that we weren't thinking about because, you know, you have a project. Well, there's also those other types of jobs that it's like, well, yeah, okay, you've got guys out there pushing, they're on the dozers and you've got the engineers in the office, but then you've also got the accountings, the people in, in accounting and HR. And, and then, so it, there's so many of the other aspects that touch these things that we're teaching and, and we're not, you know, and, and a lot of times the parents or the students, they're not thinking about this, you know, in the energy field alone. And I'm sure it's the same thing elsewhere uh, in the trades or, or what is is the when the energy um, industries when they're saying we don't have enough people they're not just talking about the electricians and the linesmen yeah they're talking about the construction workers the woodworkers the electricians Even and the office people service, I mean, yeah. oh yeah I mean the, the computer you know people working on the computers it goes across the board and I think that's what really brings career and technical education home as being so important especially now with um, the demands on the workforce that is occurring right now with the changes in technology and then it goes on and on and just yeah. keeps going. It just so, connects to everything. So important and so essential. Essential. <laughs> see what I, see yes. what I, did there. I see all how you brought that up. Right, right, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Uh, there's something that, that I wanted to, to get from you guys prior uh, when we first started the uh, the episode, but we never quite got around to it. Um, we heard Arcadis and we heard Schnabel. I kind of want to get some definitions as to what kind of business you guys do and what kind of projects you guys have worked on. And then, Ed, I want to talk about some of the different projects that you have worked on mm -hmm. throughout your many years of experience in this field. But we will go ahead and start with Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Snobble over here. All right. <laughs> I was trying to pronounce it right. I almost messed it up. You got, I got it. it. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, in the West End of Richmond, a lot of those office buildings out there, I did a lot of the earthwork testing, concrete testing, Structural steel observations, welding observations, that type of stuff. All the way up to, you know, we also were doing some construction materials testing for the uh, 
Enrico County Wastewater Treatment Plant on WRP Road. We we were one of the first ones on that group to I want to say they're probably up to phase four or phase five now on that on that okay. project. Um, and then I've been in the dams group since 2012. All right. Sounds good. So uh, you want to give us a little bit of background on, on Arcadis and what, yeah, sure. what they so, do? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Arcadis is a, we're, we're a global consulting firm, uh, environmental consulting uh, firm. We really, you know, our specialty is is improving the built and natural environment, right? So um, we work across a number of sectors, um, you know, transportation, environmental work. Um, in Here in Henrico County, where we've been for 80 years, um, we, we do a lot of work in the water sector. And that's really everything from raw water supply through wastewater treatment and, you know, storm water management um and that's that's really where i spend most of my time in 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 working on projects like that so um you know we're we're proud of the relationship we've had with uh with henrico county we're thrilled to be part of this project um it's been as i said a a long time coming and something that um is a nice uh um i say capstone but um my career is not going to be over when this project is over i don't think so but but it's a once in a lifetime project really to be to be quite honest with you to be involved in something like this running up against the clock here but real quickly uh mr overman talk about some of the different projects you've worked on leading up to this oh wow um actually i've done some uh water supply facilities, uh, water system improvements, uh, water transmission projects, uh, water rehab. I've done a couple landfills, water and sewer pumping stations, pressure reducing station, force mains, trunk sewers, uh, elevate water tanks, and painting of elevated water tanks. Water, so, water, 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 and sewer. That's my name. <laughs> so so uh, maybe this is a bit of a capstone for you right here. It no? is. Yes, it is a capstone. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I got to get you on the podcast at least one more time. <laughs> the prior to this being complete. All right, guys, time to wrap up the show here. We got folks uh, that have got to get out of the door, and I do not want to be in the way of their progress or process. I want to uh, spend a spe- uh, send a special thank you out to Michael Wooden, VP at Arcadis U.S. Inc. and Overman Capital Projects Manager with Henrico County, Tim Moore at Schnabel Engineering. And uh, I want to remind you guys to check us out on um, our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all at the handle Henrico CTE. Mike, tell them where they can find the podcast. You can find the podcast on all of your major and minor podcast venues. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us here on Henrico CTE. Now for Michael Wooten, for Ed Overman, for Mike Roberts, for Tim Moore, I'm Rashawn Garda. Until next time, so long, everyone. <laughs>